Hey guys, Nate here, the volunteer tech vlog on the Live Sound 101 YouTube channel. Uh, in today's audio lesson, I want to get back into doing audio lessons. I realize I've been doing a lot of vlog videos. Um, I want to do an audio lesson, but it's uh, again more of a mindset thing, more of a theoretical thing than uh, you know a very informational matter of fact speaker level versus line level versus mic level type of a deal but I do think it fits into audio uh, lesson fits in that wheelhouse there and uh, I want to talk about stepping back and looking at the big picture of your system things that uh, especially with a volunteer team where you got different people kind of pitching in from place to place um, it, after a while you know, you, you've got a piece of gear and it breaks and you replace it uh, and then you patch something in and uh, over time there's this idea of entropy, things moving from an organized state to a disorganized state. And um, I just think it's important to talk about the big picture of the whole system, the workflow of the whole system, the serviceability of the system. These types of things um, I think tend to, to creep in over time you might have uh, a system that was installed professionally at one point and over time you know it just moves to this state of disorganization clutter and um, I don't know it's it's good to it's good to like have maybe quarterly little sessions to just kind of say okay what's the state of our system is there anything simple we can do right this week that would improve workflow would improve serviceability would make the system easier to use easier to train people uh, things like that and so it's funny how I got here in, in my thinking this morning before I hit the record button I was uh, I was thinking about a house I went to go look at yesterday and so so we're in a situation I mentioned a few videos back where we might be moving we might not we're not sure the place the place where we're renting right now is changing ownership so the new landlord could decide to keep us on as tenants because we are such awesome tenants we always pay our rent and uh, maybe maybe that's valuable or maybe the people Oh, flashes lights. Maybe the people uh, that are taking on ownership have other plans for the property. Like maybe they, maybe they want to bring in their in-laws, or you know, who knows what the situation might be. So, uh, we're anyway, we're looking at places to rent, places to buy. We're looking at all our options: condos, uh, condex. I guess condex is a thing. If it's a, it's it's a duplex. It's also a condo where you, it's not, you don't really have a. Uh, uh, homeowners association but it's just kind of like a 50 50 thing of you and the other owner so I didn't realize that that was a thing but it's called a condex condo duplex but anyway we looked at this house the other day and this ties back into what I'm talking about I promise you'll see we're looking at this house and um, essentially it was three houses built off of each other I know it sounds kind of funny so back in like the 30s or 40s there was a little bungalow that was built you know and then as, as time went on they added on an addition you know maybe maybe there was like a porch off the back of the bungalow and they decided to make that porch uh, you know they, they put walls up and a roof and insulation and they made that part of the house and, and then another 40 years go by and they said you know what let's build a, a split level off the back of the porch and um, so we're looking at this house the other day and it's weird because it does. It looks like a little bungalow just from the street, but then it goes way back. Like it just keeps going. And uh, I think it was like just around 3,000 square feet or something. It seemed like it was a lot bigger than that, but I guess it was only 3,000 square feet. But we're looking at this house and we came in through the back entrance. And um, so the, in the back entrance was um, the split level. And it looked nice. It was like that was brand new and um, you know, relatively new, you know, new construction within the last 10, 15 years or so, you know, it looked nice, like, oh wow, this is, this place is promising, maybe we could buy it and rent out half the tenants, or we could, you know, use it as the name says, to have in-laws live there, or something like that, so we're looking through it, and then we get to, like, the, the, the middle section, where they did the, the addition, and we're kind of scratching our heads, we're like, huh, there's, there's a door here, but it's not like a full height door, it's kind of a weird door, everybody had to duck to get into it, um, and then that led down into a basement where there was clearly like 
water that would fill up in there every once in a while and then there was a sump pump that would pump it out and there's like a little like little, little bridge it was like six inches above the uh the floor where uh people would clearly step on to get to the other end of the basement to access different things I'm like huh that's a little funny and then you know we came over to the other side and um the other section of the house you could see where the bungalow original bungalow was and then there's this other room like a family room with like a surround sound system in it and comfortable chairs uh, and then there was washer and dryer right in the middle of the family room and there, there was just like it was unconventional there was these there were these weird things you could you could almost like it was almost telling a story of time like how they uh, a story in time about how they just ex randomly expanded this house to meet their needs without looking at the big picture now they're going to sell it and strangers are gonna come in there and they're looking at this house and uh, man I'll tell you what you have really got to have an eye for the potential when you come into a place like that because it is jarring just to see things where they don't belong and tr just it's 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 a little bit overwhelming I know people certain people are probably house flippers and they can come in there and fix things up no problem but man if you're if you're not like a contractor or uh, you don't have that interior design uh, muscle in your brain where you can see past all the superficial stuff to see the bones of the house and what can be done. Oh, that's the other thing is it kind of scares you because you're like, hmm, I wonder if they pulled permits for all this wacky stuff that they built. But um, anyway, that little side note story to tie back in. How often do you look at the big picture of your system and what you're doing? Is it, do you just tend to randomly expand and build things out as you go and it just you just have this kind of like odd situation if you look at the whole picture does does it make sense do the do the puzzle pieces fit together in a way where if a stranger came in you know a stranger that was experienced in live sound or experienced in in video production or, or broadcast environments could they just kind of sit down and be like, oh yeah, I see what you're doing here. Oh yep, yep, you got your gain over here, you got your switch here. Oh, here's the PTZ control, here's that. You know, is it set up in a way that just kind of like makes sense to, to standard conventions or like how far off the reservation have you gone over time? So I mean, that's that's one of the things that I, I think about sometimes. And uh, I was thinking about that this morning, how that tied into that story. So anyway, big picture. How, how is your system helping or hurting your workflow? And uh, I'll wrap this video up in a, in a little bit. Just one more story. So like one thing that was kind of came to my attention this week is uh, as, a, as our we had a problem with our main system so we had to set up a, an analog uh, mixing console <clears throat> as like a backup audio system and uh, one of the things we did rather than um, move the snake over to a different location and then run patch cables back to all the distribution gear we moved or Josh moved some of the distribution gear so our broadcast stereo distro uh, that sends the broadcast mix to multiple places that it needs to go. Um, and uh, a headphone amp and a recorder rather than run a long XLR cable off the snake back to the rack for the recorder. He just moved the recorder over so it was easy to use. And we've been talking about doing this for a while because of workflow. Because what happens when you're about to start the service, you wanna hit that record button on our solid state recorder and it was located in the rack. You had to get up out of the mix position. At the same time, you're about to unmute or mute a whole bunch of microphones. You had to run over five feet or six feet, push the record button, make sure the tracks were armed, run back over. And it just, from a workflow perspective, it didn't make sense. So this whole emergency backup where we had to switch our system over to use a different board um, gave us an excuse to do a little update. And man, it makes such a big difference for the workflow just to have just to be able to sit in that seat and not have to get up and walk right when you need to push the record button. I don't know, it's one of those little things, right? But uh, it makes a huge impact on the workflow. And uh, we've been meaning to do it for a long time, but this, this was the catalyst to make that happen. So anyway, just a reminder to myself and wanted to share with anybody out there watching, think about your workflow. Think about something simple you could do to uh, to make the usability, the user experience better for, for volunteers uh, or, or people who are, are serving up there uh, in the control room. So that is my thought for today. Uh, my name is Nate. This is the Volunteer Tech Vlog. 
Uh, if you're curious, some other projects I, I work on is, is a monthly podcast uh, called AV Shop Talk. It's produced monthly. New episodes come out the first every month. Uh, I just info, uh, interviewed Craig McCormick, editor at large from Commercial Integrator. So he's going to be the next guest on the show. And uh, that show will publish July 1st. Uh, and uh, so that's a fun little podcast I do about uh, more more heavy on the pro side in the commercial integration world. Um, but some, you guys might find that information useful too. So I think it's a I think it's a fun show. It's audio only. Uh, and then of course, um, in addition to that podcast and this vlog, I I also started out as a YouTuber as Big Nate eighty four. So I, uh, I got a YouTube channel. I started oh back in like two thousand six for like a class project in college. I was taking a film and video production class and the homework assignment was hey check out this new website that came out called YouTube go make a channel and upload a 30 second video that's your homework <laughs> so I, I created the big Nate 84 channel then didn't do much with it till 2011 and then I realized you could make money on YouTube if you made really good how-to videos so I started making uh, really good how-to videos so I got, got about 3.3 million views I think over there Something like that, a whole bunch of subscribers. So anyway, those are the other projects that I work on. I realize I don't talk about them a whole lot, but I'm gonna start plugging some of my other stuff here for anybody who's interested. All right, thanks for watching and you have a nice day. Oh, didn't hit it.